Good day, everyone. It's Caitlin. Today, we are making a 1920s bra corset bus container. Hello and welcome. We're going to make what is essentially a corset. It's like a bra corset combination thing. It's it's from 1918, so it's a little earlier than the 1920s stuff I'm doing because I'm doing late 1920s. But this is the closest thing I could find that I liked that would be workable. So, I have here some very pretty dotted cotille, and it's pink, so we're going with pink under pink, uh, pink under thing theme, I guess. And I'll probably go ahead and line this with the same pink cotton that we made the undergarments of. And um, I got this pattern from the Commercial Pattern Archives, that's what it is, Commercial Pattern Archives. And so they have a bunch of stuff. And if you haven't used it before and you're into vintage clothing, I would highly suggest it. Um, they, they just have pictures of the pattern, so you kind of have to know how to grade things to your size and make things your size. But once you know that, it's not terribly difficult. Maybe we'll do a video on it one day. I'm not quite so I need to add a little bit to this. Um, let's see. I bought lots of stuff so I can make other courses like this. Or lots of fabric. This is my longest one. I need to add it to the couple of inches. Let's go ahead and do this. Okay. So, I don't need to add anything to the um, top or bottom. It's just a little bit small for what I drafted online, and I'm just going to mess with it. Yeah, okay. Because that's a little bit cute. Okay. We're good. There are absolutely no directions with these either, so you do have to know kind of what you're doing. Alrighty. So we're going to cut this out. And I'm going to cut one of the lining as well. And I'm going to make that the same. sewing the thing together. I'm hopeful that this will be a pretty quick project. In theory it should be. Alright, I got footage of this part but apparently the audio isn't working so you don't get sound. But this is just me stitching together the side seams. So I stitched the front, uh, or I stitched the backs to either side of the front on both the lining and the fashion fabric separately. My next step was sewing all those little darts. Um, that just helps with fitting. I ended up changing quite a few of the darts. Um, the ones in the back I needed to be longer to not get so much of a pucker, but I wanted the pucker in the front because that's what gives you your bust shaping. Um, and those worked out really well. I also ended up adding a dart on either side on the bottom waist, um, just underneath the bust for just a little bit of extra shaping and because it was too big down there anyway. Okay, so I have sewn them together. I think I filmed that, but I think it was on the wrong setting, so I apologize if it's not in there. It just means it was on the wrong setting and it was on the fast mode, and there's no point in showing that because you couldn't hear any of the talking. So what I basically went over was I, d I did the stitching here and I did the darts. The darts, I ended up having to kind of recut the backs because they had darts on here too, and it didn't fit this front piece with the darts on this piece. I also, because the darts were very small, I had to make them longer to make them look right. And I kept putting it on, kind of putting it on. I ended up having to put a dart um, in the bottom front, which makes sense, I guess, because you usually have darts there. And I had to elongate the dart here just to give me the right shaping. So I'm ironing everything. Iron this seam open. And then we're going to put this and the front piece together and probably stitch them at the back. It makes sense that I had to redo the darts because everyone's individually sized and not everyone 
even though you're the same size as the pattern, you may not be the same shape as the pattern. So it makes total sense that I had to redo that. There we go. All right. So I'm going to put right sides together. I'm going to stitch right up this back seam to attach the pieces and then flip it inside out. I'm not going to attach, I don't know what that was. I'm not going to attach this front or the top or the bottom yet. I'm just going to do the sides. And then we're going to do the boning channels, which will be the, the next fun part. All right, so turned it inside out. I'm going to go and do the boning channels. So I'm going to stitch it um, just a little bit from the edge here. That'll be a boning channel. change my settings so the needle's a little bit further apart. Okay, and this one will lace, so that's where the lace, or the grommets will be. That's where I was looking for grommets. So back to the other setting. And this will be for another thing of boning. Okay, so I have two boning channels in the back. Now down the side seam, I'm going to sew down the center. And I'm going to set, uh, sew about 3 eighths from this edge and 3 eighths from this edge. That'll give me two channels of boning per side. I have um, boning to put in. So I'm using German plastic whalebone, which is my favorite type of boning to use. And I just measured it against it and added you know, a little bit of seam allowance so you don't you know, hit the boning when you're sewing in the um, binding that we're about to do. This one has the darts, so it's going to be really hard to get this through the darts or in, in, in a way where the darts don't irritate it. So now I can bind it or finish binding it because I did start a bit. And I'm just using that plain cotton again because I didn't want to use this stuff, although it would look better to use this stuff. This stuff is so thick. I didn't think it would really work. It would just add a whole lot of bulk, and I didn't want that. I'm going to stitch this all the way on, and then we'll turn it inside out and do the whip on the bottom. But then all it is is putting in the grommets and lacing it up, and then we'll be done. Corsets are not nearly as difficult as everyone seems to make them out to be. The only difficult part is the fitting part, which, granted, can be a little difficult, especially you're not used to the lines of the period. But really, once you get it fitted, the concept of making a corset and the practical aspects of making a corsetry aren't that difficult. Unfortunately, I've made plenty of corsets in my life, so I at least understand the concepts here. You know, some of the execution isn't quite there because this is a different time period. Which is why I had to recut the back, because I quickly realized that wasn't going to work. So I'm going to take a second piece and have to mimic there, but that means I'm going to need... So I did cut one other. I was hoping I can get it with that, but I need to cut one more. And I cut that binding an inch and a half. And while I'm here, you know what? I also do need to cut ties. Or not ties. Um, straps. Which I think I can do in one length. I don't need them. Oh, that should be plenty long. Okay. So ties. I want them thinner than an inch because I want them thinner than the chemise ones I did last time. So let's see if I can make them three quarters of an inch or just under. So that'd be half an inch. Let's do two inches of cutting and see how that works for us. I also could have used ribbon. I just don't have any ribbon right now that's going to work. I'm going to cut this in half so I have two straps. And the same as what we did with the last straps last week, I'm just going to turn them in, stitch them, and then turn them inside out. And that way we'll have that. And we can stitch those on whenever we get this completed because I am going to need to put this on 
to know where the straps are going to go and, of course, how long to actually make them. Alright, I have the binding that I am just flipping on. And then I have to finish the grommets and put on the um, shoulder straps. I guess lace it up and all that, which I can't do the shoulder straps till I get all the other stuff done because the shoulder straps, I need to be able to try the thing on for real to get that you know, done correctly. Alright, so grommet. I have a tool somewhere. This thing. And I have my little grommet pieces that come in, you know, two parts. I got the little tool I got from Amazon for this project in particular. Alright. And I got that. I do some lacing. Let's see. It was an inch from this last. And I'm guesstimating here. I'm not going to actually sew them in until I am for sure this is where this needs to go. I'm just kind of, right now I'm, I'm just pinning it in until I, I know. And then once I know, I'll, I'll sew it together. Grommets are done. You can go ahead and lace it. I know I brought lacy over here somewhere. Here we go. I won't need very much, which is nice. So let me just see what I got this far. And then I'm to tie, and I'll double that. You can see how technical this is and exactly how precise I make all this. Okay. It should be much easier to lace since it's so such a small little corset. That's the lace. I'm gonna try it on. Just over my clothes, lace it up, see how it fits, put these shoulder straps in place, and then we're done enough. Once I sew these on, I'm just going to do it by machine very quickly. And I'll show you what it looks like on. Here we are. So here's a chemise from last time. I'm wearing shorts underneath because giant slit is uh, not very modest. Let me get rid of this. But I have here the corset tree contraption, I suppose. Corset contraption. I'm going to put this lace back through. Everything is put on so it has all the lovely straps and lacing. So that's what it looks. It's not very flattering on, in my opinion, but I'm also used to like 19th century stuff where you have very, very defined waist, which is not really a thing in the 1920s, which is one of the reasons why I hate the 1920s. But this goes on like this. And so, I'm covering it up where it belongs, but it, it kind of just doesn't really give you a defined shape. And I'm just lacing it back kind of with a corset. And it actually does close in the back, so 19 century cedars, that's just like it doesn't fit right, but the um, 1918 pattern has it closing in the back, so I made it close in the back. Um, well, the thing is, I lose any weight where I have an issue because I have to remake the thing. But you can kind of see, like, it definitely contains the bust. It feels like a bra. It feels like a very long bra, but strangely, it's more comfortable than a bra. It's very strange. I mean, I was expecting it to be more comfortable. And I don't feel the boning at all. Um, I do think it's a good thing that I did the uh, very stiff fabric. Sorry, I'm trying to get these ties put together. Um, because I think that helps with the support. But you can see I'm very well supported, and I am glad I took that extra dart in the, in the um, waist. I probably could have taken maybe half an inch more, but it's okay. And here it is from the back. Let's pull that all the way down. That doesn't always like to come all the way down. Okay. 
You can see it does close. Probably a little bit open in the back, that's because I didn't really try. But, I mean, it functions as what it is. It's a bra type, corset type thing. It's a bust container. That's exactly what the patterns called it. It called it brassiere or a bust container. <laughs> Which I thought was the weirdest name, but I kind of want to use it now. It does. It contains the bust. And it does make you... Because there isn't a lot of shaping in here. Like, there's a lot of space underneath here. I could have taken a bigger dart, but I didn't because you don't want to be very shapely in the 1920s. You want to have a very boyish figure that was kind of the style. So you really don't want a large bust. You kind of do want to flatten it, which this does very well. And you don't want to see it throughout the waist um, or in the waist very well. So it does exactly what it should do. So it does exactly what it should do, which is fantastic. Like, it does what it should do. But it's not my favorite style, it's not my favorite shape, but I knew that going into this because I hate the 1920s. But it does function, and it does match my chemise, which is very nice. So I'm all matching underpinnings, which is great. Uh, at least I think so, but yeah. It's very nice to have pretty underpinnings. I will say that for the 1920s. I can have pretty colored underpinnings. I have pretty underpinnings in the 19th century, but they're not colored. You still have white undergarments in the 19th, or the 19th century. Um, except sometimes you have colored corsets, that becomes a thing later in the 19th century, in the mid-19th century. Um, but as far as having like colored chemises and all that, that's very new and it's kind of fun. So I am happy about that. Um, of course it's still mostly white, but it has that little pink throughout. And so it matches and it looks really good and I'm happy with it. So that's um, the bra type corset thing, bus container of the 1920s. Uh, next week or next month, I think next month, we are doing a slit and some garters because I have nothing to hold up in my stockings right now. So I'm just going to some ribbon garters and I need a slit to cover this since it is uh, colored because my dress is partially see-through. So I need to have something white that completely covers all of this. But this is the base of 1920s underpinnings, or at least one option. Because I could have done the combinations plus the bra, I could have done tap pants and bra. I could have done um, envelope chemise, bra, which is kind of what I did. I could have done separate. Like there's so many options for underpinnings in the 1920s because everything's changing. We're coming out of the four or five layers of garments to like two or three or four undergarments. We're getting out of like the four to five layers of underpinnings to the two to three layers of underpinnings. So you really have a lot of options in the 1920s, and this is just the option that I picked. I feel comfortable making a chemise. I know what a chemise is. I know what it, how it functions. They're easy to make. I don't like drawers, so I made the envelope chemise with a little strip underneath. Corset is very comfortable for me. So I made the most corset-like bra, because a lot of those 1920s bras, I'm sure they work, but I'm fairly large busted, and I'm very concerned about some of those may not hold up very well. If I made it out of this fabric, yeah, maybe they would have. But I'm seeing a lot of very light, dainty fabrics, and I'm like, I don't think that's going to hold me in. Now, I could be wrong, because I've been wrong before, and a lot of times when they do things, they do things for a reason, so they typically worked. But I just didn't think it was going to work, and I wanted something a little bit more supportive, so this is what I went with. And I'm happy with the, uh, the options I had. I'm happy with what I chose. But thank you so much for joining me today as we made our... 1920s bra bus container. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Click that little bell notification so you're notified anytime I upload a new video. And as always, have a fantastic week, and I'll see you back here in the next video.